Chapter 11. Alpha Drew POV. When I climbed out of the boat onto the jetty and Isabella had touched my hand before pulling away in shock, I knew she had felt the sparks. There was no doubt in my mind from the way she reacted. When she had began to walk away once again embarrassed by my words I had pulled her back to me. Her scent was overpowering and I didn't want to let her go. She must have caught sight of me looking at her plump lips. They were so close to me, screaming for mine to touch them. When she had told me she was married my heart had sank and I'd released my hold on her. It's not like I didn't know this already, she was wearing a wedding ring but I guess I was hoping that now I knew she had felt the mate bond she would know we were meant to be together. Now back in my room thinking about it logically, I realized that as we knew there was a strong possibility she didn't even know she was wolf, then it would make sense she had no idea about the bond and so the sparks would have simply confused her. So I made the decision to not bring up the mate bond until Amelia had arrived and we knew whether she was under a spell. Cal had mind-linked me as we were walking back from Marina and informed me that Owen had called to let him know Amelia was on her way and she should be here by this evening. She had demanded 50 grand and a week's stay here once she was done with our business. Owen had agreed knowing how important it was for me to get to the bottom of things with Isabella. I had been so deep in conversation via mind link with Cal that I hadn't spoken a word to Isabella the whole walk back. I hoped she wasn't reading too much into it and didn't think I was being funny with her because she had told me she was married. As much as it pained me knowing she was she was faithful to her husband even though he wasn't her true mate was touching. In a strange way it made me happy as I knew that hopefully we would be together and I knew that I would always be able to trust her. I had only been in my room for a few minutes and I was already missing being so close to her. I opened the door hoping that her lingering scent would be enough to satisfy my need. That's when I heard her sobbing loudly. Go to mate, Casper said to me sounding desperate to comfort her. Even though I wanted to, I knew that right now me going to her was probably the last thing she needed. So I closed the door whilst fighting the urge to run her and break down her door so I could scoop her up in my arms and tell her everything was okay. She just needs some time to herself to process everything from today. I told Casper and he whimpered in my head before retreating away in a sulk. I picked my mobile phone up from the table and was glad I had decided against taking it with me today otherwise it would have been ruined. 12.45 p.m., okay time to freshen up and get ready for our massages. I was stood inside the treatment room waiting for Isabella to arrive and when she walked in she took my breath away. My dick twitched as I took in her figure in the dress she had on. She had curled her hair and it fell beautifully around her face. She instantly cast her eyes to the floor when she saw me. She must be feeling awkward from our last interaction. I strode towards her closing the distance between us and gently cupped her face in my hand and moved it so she was looking at me. I understand that you are married Isabella. I said. But that doesn't change the fact you are the most amazingly beautiful woman I have ever laid my eyes on. Your husband is a very lucky man. At the mention of her husband I saw a flash of emotion cross her face. Sadness it was unmistakable. I frowned as I still held her cheek in my hand and asked. Isabella why do you look sad at the mention of your husband? She gulped back a small sob that threatened to escape her lips and shook her head as she took a step back away from me. I decided not to push the matter further at that moment but secretly felt a bit of hope. If the mention of her husband made her sad then perhaps she wasn't happy and we really did have a shot together. We walked in silence over to the beds which were right next to each other. Cal had informed me in the mind link conversation we had had that he had actually managed to pull a few strings and get us booked into a couple's massage. She seemed oblivious to this though. I politely turned my back as she stripped down. It's okay you can turn around now I'm covered. I turned around and my fantasy from the night before was there right in front of my eyes only the reality was even better than I had imagined. I began to strip right there in front of her and I expected her to look away but to my surprise she watched me intently. When I reached to remove my boxers she turned away. I was glad she did as the scent of her arousal hit my nostrils and my dick immediately shot to attention. I hastily removed my boxers and grabbed the towel before laying down on my front on the bed. 
My dick was painfully hard and pressing into me but I couldn't let her know that or she would freak out. I'm ready now. We both turned to face each other as the door opened and the two masseuses walked in without a word. I glanced in their direction and was secretly relieved to see they were both female. I didn't think I would be able to lie here and watch another man put his hands on her. She closed her eyes as they began to work on us and her moans of pleasure did nothing to help the erect state of my dick. I groaned myself as I too closed my eyes and imagined the hands that were rubbing my body belonged to her. Isabella POV Drew had politely turned away while I undressed, but when it was his turn I couldn't tear my eyes away from him. I knew it was wrong to look, but something inside me wouldn't let me look away. When he had mentioned Marcus earlier I had nearly lost it. The way he spoke to me reminded me so much of how Marcus used to. Flashback. Tonight is the night. I have been with Marcus for six months now and he has been so kind and loving. My parents both love him and I can't imagine being with anyone else. I'm nervous as this is my first time but I know he will take care of me. He has been nothing but patient so far and even though all we have done is kiss, I know I love him and he loves me. Whenever we are out together there's gorgeous girls throwing themselves at him as if I'm not stood right next to him. He doesn't even seem to really notice them though as he simply waves them away and pulls me close to him, constantly telling me I am the most beautiful girl in the world and he only has eyes for me. So I know I've made the right decision to give myself entirely to him tonight. My parents have gone away for the weekend and I've invited him over for some food and a movie. I haven't told him that my parents are gone or that I want to be with him completely tonight. I want it to be a surprise. He arrives with some flowers as I greet him at the door with a passionate kiss. He looks shocked at my braziness but quickly responds kissing me back with matching hunger. I pull him into the house and lead him up the stairs to my bedroom. All my plans for food and a movie first are out of the window. I need to do this now before I lose my nerve and change my mind. I turn to look at him as we enter my room and he quirks a brow at me. I want you to take me Marcus. He looks at me with a slightly shocked expression, he clearly wasn't expecting this. Are you sure about this Isabella? He asks me. I nod my head in response as I've suddenly lost the ability to speak. He needs no more convincing as he grabs a hold of me and throws me gently on the bed. He tears my dress from my body and sits back removing his shirt as I lie there in just my black lace panties watching him. He stands up and quickly disposes of his pants and underwear and I stare with wide eyes at his already erect dick. He climbs on top of me and his mouth finds my nipple. He sucks on it hard making me gasp in pleasure and slight pain. His hand slides up my thigh and into my panties, and he rips them away. His finger jerks inside my wet folds and he moans against my nipple. So wet and ready for me. He repositioned himself so he was on top of me and without warning slams himself inside me. I scream in pain as he crashes through my barrier and it really hurts. This is nothing like I expected. I thought we would have some foreplay and take it slow. I knew that this but would hurt as it always does the first time but this was more painful than I had imagined. He continues to suck on my nipples moving from one to the other and biting down on them also. He is slamming himself into me roughly and although there's some sensation of pleasure I mostly feel pain. A few tears escape my eyes and he leans down and whispers in my ear. I'm sorry Isabella, I know it hurts. It always does the first time. You have just got to try and get through it. I nod my head and bite my lip. He thrusts become even harder and more erratic until he roars and empties himself inside me. Shit. He just came inside me. What the fuck? Why didn't he put a condom on? He rolls off me panting heavily and I ask him in a panicked voice if he just did that. He shrugs and says he got caught up in the moment. It will be fine. No one gets pregnant first time. End of flashback. Drew is just about to remove his underwear and I realize I'm still staring he doesn't seem phased, but I know I shouldn't be looking at him in that way. I am confused by the feeling in the pit of my stomach and I feel a slight dampness between my thighs. I turn away before this strange feeling takes a hold of me further. 
I don't know what happening to me. I've never felt this way before not even with Marcus. After Marcus had taken me that night his entire attitude towards me had changed. He was no longer the caring loving man I had fallen in love with. He became cold and distant. In fact he didn't even bother to stay after he'd got himself dressed. He had just left me there feeling sore and scared. In fact we barely spoke for the next few months. I had been feeling sick and my stomach had started to grow, but even though I hadn't really spoken to him for a while I still trusted Marcus when he had said I couldn't get pregnant the first time. Looking back I know how naive that makes me sound but I thought he loved me. Around four months later there was just no denying it anymore and I took a test. I had stared in horror at the two blue lines on the stick and sat there on the bathroom floor completely dumbfounded. When I told him, I thought he would be shocked, but he didn't even seem surprised, it was like he was expecting it. He told me we would have to get married now. That was his proposal. I wasn't sure I wanted that now. Before we had sex if he had asked me I would have jumped at the chance, but now I just didn't know. Of course when I told my parents they agreed that I had to marry Marcus it was the only thing to be done. I'd convinced myself that he was just shocked and he loved me why else would he want to marry me. So we had got married a month later. It was a tiny wedding with just us and our parents. Not what a girl dreams of but my wishes just didn't seem to be important to anyone. We didn't even have a honeymoon or a reception. After we married I hoped that things would get back to how they were but it was like Marcus didn't even like me anymore. He would avoid being anywhere near me and constantly put me down. Since that first time he hadn't even touched me again so I was often left wondering if I had been so bad at it he just didn't want to bother again. I pulled from my thoughts as I hear Drew say he's ready. I turn back to face him and the look of desire swirling in his eyes is so strong. He really does want me. Marcus never looked at me that way. Not even in the beginning when I thought he truly loved me. I hear the door open and footsteps approach and warm hands begin to knead at my skin. I close my eyes and moan at the sensation it feels so good. I hear Drew groan and I sneak a peek in his direction. His eyes are also closed and his has a massive smile on his face. I can't help the feeling of jealousy that engulfs me when I see the woman touching him and making him moan. I secretly wish it was me touching him. I want to be the one to elicit those sounds from his body. What is happening to me? Chapter 12 Alpha Drew After our massages were done the two women had left the room as quietly as they had entered. I felt so relaxed and still slightly aroused from imagining it was Isabella who was working her magic on me with her hands. Although thankfully my dick had gone down dramatically. I stole a glance in Isabella's direction and I noticed her eyes were still shut. I listened intently to the sound of her breathing and I realized she had drifted off to sleep. I just laid there not moving so as not to disturb her and watched her sleep. She looked so peaceful. After about five minutes I noticed her demeanor change as she scrunched up her face. No please go away. Stop talking to me. Leave me alone. She whimpered those words and I was about to call out to her and wake her when she carried on. I don't understand what do you mean you can't wait for your first shift. I froze. Was she talking to her wolf? It certainly sounded like it, but how could she be talking to her wolf if Casper couldn't sense her? Are you hearing this? I asked him in my head. Yes, but it doesn't make sense. I still can't sense her wolf. He answered me sounding as confused as me. If she's not talking to her now then the only thing that makes sense is she has spoken to her in the past. I said to him. Isabella was clearly starting to look distressed and I couldn't leave her in that way any longer. I rose from the bed and wrapped the towel around my waist. I walked over to her bed and gently shook her still bare shoulder, savoring the tingles our touch created. She shot up and looked around in a panic in a confused state. I couldn't help but let my eyes wander down her naked body for a split second. She was truly a sight to behold and I had to fight the temptation to take her nipples and mouth there and then and claim what was mine. Isabella POV I was having the dream again. 
The one where that damn voice kept talking to me. It was always one of two things when I dreamed of hearing the voice. It was always one of the two times of my life when I had heard her speaking to me. When I had first heard her and then my parents' doctor friend had given me the medication. But also she began to talk to me after the same doctor had confirmed my pregnancy, not that it needed confirming and had told me I would have to stop my medication so as not to harm the babies. The voice had seemed annoyed at me saying I had been silencing her for too long and it's not fair she should have shifted by now and been allowed to run free. She was also annoyed as now I was pregnant she couldn't shift as it could harm the pups. That's what she had called my babies. If I didn't know for sure the first time I'd heard her speaking that I was crazy when she started up again, whilst I was pregnant it had confirmed it. What she was saying was complete nonsense. What did she mean about shifting? Not that I dwelled on it too much. At the end of the day it was just some random voice in my head that would stop as soon as the twins were born, and I could start on my meds again. I shot up when I felt someone gently nudging my shoulder and I looked around confused. Where the hell am I? Suddenly it all came flooding back to me. I looked down and gasped realizing I was completely naked and even the towel that had been covering my behind had slipped to floor when I'd shot up. I folded my hands across my chest in attempt to cover myself. Drew was stood right next to me with concerned look on his face. He stood there with just a tiny towel wrapped around his waist and didn't seem even slightly bothered by my nakedness. I glanced towards my dress a few feet away on the floor and his eyes followed my gaze. Without saying a word he walked over and picked it up before handing it to me and turning his back so I could dress. As I was slipping it over my head he suddenly spoke. Isabella. I hope this doesn't seem to forward but I have to ask. He hesitated before continuing. You seem to be having a very vivid bad dream. You were talking to someone about shifting. Does this happen often? Oh my god. I was actually talking in my sleep and he heard me. Now he knows I'm crazy. I didn't know how to answer him without sounding crazier so I just ignored him. He stole a quick glance over his shoulder and saw I was now clothed and turned around fully. It's okay Isabella. You can trust me. I have saved your life today have I not? I hesitated still unsure what to say. Then I realized that I was never going to see him again after this holiday. So what if he thinks I'm crazy? It's not like anything can happen between us and with the way I've been feeling around him today, perhaps it's best he does think I'm crazy and then he might keep his distance from me. When I was 16 I started to hear a voice in my head. It was talking nonsense. I was terrified and told my mom and dad. They admitted to me that I wasn't their daughter and that my birth mom had heard voices in her head too. So they had adopted me when I was two. They took me to a doctor friend of theirs who gave me some medication to take that stopped the voice. Then when I was pregnant with the twins I was told to stop the medication so as not to harm them. The voice started again and only stopped when I had the boys and was able to start my medication again. Drew stared at me in shock. It's to be expected. The woman he was clearly hoping to have a holiday romance with is a nutter. What did she say to you? He asked me and now it was my turn to be shocked. How did he know it was a she and why was he still stood there instead of running away? She erm. She would say she was excited for her first shift and erm then that she was mad I'd hidden her away until I was pregnant. He just nodded his head as he processed my words. When he didn't speak for a few minutes I took that as my cue to leave. Besides I was going to have to get to the pool soon to collect the boys. Well goodbye then Drew, thanks again for what you did for me today. Isabella. He called after me as I opened the door. Would you like to join me for dinner tonight? I found myself nodding excitedly before I even knew what I was doing. His grinned at me. Fantastic. I will collect you from your room at 8 p.m. I really look forward to it. I can't go out. What about my sons? I turned to him with arms folded. 
I will arrange childcare don't worry. I'm not just going to let anyone look after my boys. I have a friend arriving this evening she is great with kids and we will only be in my room next door. I had collected the boys from the pool and we had headed upstairs to our room. They had spent the last two hours telling me all about their day each talking over the other so I'd had to keep stopping them and getting them to slow down so I could understand. We had all taken our medication, the boys with very little fuss for once and they were now tucking into cheeseburgers, fries, and a large coke each. They had asked why I wasn't eating and I told them I was having my dinner with a friend I'd meet today while they were off having their adventure. They had nodded in understanding and didn't ask any more questions. They were already very tired by 7 p.m. so I sent them to bed a little earlier than they would normally go. They didn't make a fuss over it which confirmed it to me. After they were in bed I took a quick shower and scanned my clothes for something to wear. I decided there was no harm in looking good. I had made it very clear to Drew that I was married so there was no chance of him getting any wrong ideas. I tied my hair up in a tight bun and then teased a few strands loose and let them fall down the sides of my face. Next I applied a little foundation, some blush and a hint of white eyeshadow that always brought out the color of my eyes. Then I flicked on some mascara and finished my look with some light pink lipstick. Finally, I picked up the blood red dress I'd choose in and slipped it on. Just as I was fastening my feet into my matching red strappy heels, I heard a light knock at the door. I walked over as quietly as I could on the marble floor so as not to disturb the boys. When I opened it Drew was stood on the other side with a huge bouquet of pink roses and a box of chocolates. So much for him not getting the wrong idea I thought. Stood next to him was a woman I'd never seen before she was maybe an inch shorter than me with jet black hair and a pale complexion. She smiled at me and introduced herself as Amelia. She held out her hand which I took and shook but was surprised when she held on to it a little bit longer than necessary. Drew cleared his throat and I turned my attention back to him. You look stunning Isabella. Thank you, you don't scrub up to badly yourself. I replied with a smile. Okay Amelia, we are right next door any problems just come and let us know. Drew stepped to the side so I could exit the room. I hesitated. What was I doing? I was leaving my boys alone with a stranger so I could have dinner with another man. They will be fine Isabella. Drew said to me as if reading my mind. With that he gently slipped his arm around my waist and guided me down the corridor to his room. Chapter 13 Alpha Drew POV After Isabella had told me about the voice in her head, I was in shock. She had been talking to her wolf and she had no idea. The poor woman thought she was crazy. There had to be a lot more to this story. I hadn't spoken for a minute while I processed the information she had given me. As she was leaving the room I had called after her and invited her for dinner tonight expecting her to turn me down straight away. To my pleasant surprise she had agreed without any hesitation. I knew this would be an opportunity to find out more about her and possibly figure out what her parents and doctor were giving her to suppress her wolf. Did they even know she was a wolf or did they genuinely believe she was crazy? Something about the whole situation didn't sit right with me and I was going to get to the bottom of it. When she had mentioned not having someone to look after the boys I immediately knew that this would be the perfect excuse to introduce her to Amelia. I had been struggling with an idea of how to get them close enough for Amelia to inspect her for signs of a spell and now I could take Amelia straight to her room without it seeming strange. I had dressed quickly and returned to my room, mind linking Cal on the way instructing him to meet me there. He was already sat out on my balcony with a beer in his hand when I arrived. Make yourself at home. I grumbled under my breath as I grabbed a beer and went to join him. So how goes the mission? He asked me as I took a seat next to him whilst cracking open my beer. Well I have definitely got a bit more information but it raises more questions than it answers. How so? He asks raising an eyebrow at me. Well it turns out she was adopted at the age of two. Apparently her real mother was a crazy woman who heard voices in her head so her parents took her in and raised her. I glanced down towards the pool and could see her sat looking in the direction of the beach. She must be waiting for the boys, I concluded. 
When she began to hear a voice in her own head at the age of 16, her parents had taken her to a doctor friend of theirs and they had given her some medication to stop the voice. I continued relaying the story to Cal. The voice spoke about how it couldn't wait till her first shift. Holy shit. So she was talking to her wolf and her parents got something to push her wolf back. Cal exclaimed looking at me in pure shock. I nodded my head. The question is did they really think she was crazy and somehow managed to get something that could suppress her wolf? Or did they know she was a wolf and didn't want her to know? Cal finished my sentence for me. This was exactly the question I had been asking myself. I really needed to know what she was taking. She agreed to have dinner with me here tonight. I told Cal and he smirked at me. Don't give me that look it's just dinner. She is loyal to her husband, although I do get the feeling she isn't entirely happy in her marriage. You sure you can keep your hands to yourself if you are both alone in here, boss? He asks, nudging me with his elbow. I'll have to if I don't want to scare her away. Besides, she would only agree if she had someone to stay with boys. Cal gives me a panicked look and I hear his heartbeat start to pick up dramatically. Calm down. I was talking about Amelia. I laughed. A few hours later, I had been out and picked up some chocolates and a huge bouquet of pink roses. I know nothing is going to happen, but there's no harm in me showing her what a romantic I can be is there. Amelia has arrived and I have briefed her on what we know so far. She has agreed to sit with the boys, as like me she believes it to be the perfect opportunity for her to get up close to Isabella without raising any awkward questions. I have also given her instructions to have a sneaky look around the room while we are out and see if she can find any medication so we might be able to figure out what she is taking. I already have a suspicion that she is taking Wolfsbane, but I would like confirmation. It was the only thing other than Silver that would have the ability to keep her wolf back long term. But eight years of Silver would have surely killed her by now. When she opened the door I was speechless. For someone who kept reminding me she was married she had really made an effort. You're one to talk. Casper suddenly piped up my head. Flowers, chocolates and the suit not to mention the three course meal you have ordered to the room. I shush him and wrapped my hand around Isabella leading her down the corridor to my room. I opened the door and lead her inside and she gasped at the food laid out on the table on the balcony. I had added a few candles and ordered a couple of bottles of the same rose I saw arriving to her room the night before. I thought we could sit and eat and watch the sunset. I told her guiding her outside. You shouldn't have gone to so much effort. She replied shyly. Nothing is too much effort for you, Isabella. She blushed deeply and turned her gaze away from me. I put down the flowers and chocolates I was still holding onto and took her hand in mine. Come on, let's eat. We sat on the balcony eating the delicious food. We had a starter of prawn cocktail, followed by a steak with a creamy peppercorn sauce and then we shared a chocolate fudge cake. I couldn't resist getting some on my fork and guiding it to her mouth. She looked a bit taken aback for a moment but then she leant in and took it gladly. Our eyes connected in that moment and we just sat staring completely lost in each other. This was perfect it was everything I had wanted the evening to be and more. I never wanted the night to end. Isabella POV As I stared into Drew's eyes I was transfixed. I could see the love and desire he felt for me in them. But this was crazy how could he love me we had only meet one day ago. Yet somehow I felt comfortable enough to tell him my secret already. Even with Marcus it had taken me a few months before I felt I could tell him. Marcus. My husband. What are you doing here Isabella? You know this is all an illusion. Life is never this perfect. You thought Marcus loved you. You gave yourself to him and now he can't stand you. You disgust him. That's what will happen with Drew. Besides you have Jack and Jacob to think about. Their happiness comes above your own and if you were to go any further here with Drew it would destroy their lives. I tore my eyes away from Drew and rose suddenly from chair. I'm so sorry Drew. I shouldn't be here. This is wrong. I said my voice breaking slightly as I spoke. 
He stood and moved close to me and whispered. Then tell me why does it feel so right? I visibly shivered from his closeness, but hoped he would think it was from the cool night air as the sun had long dipped behind the horizon. He wrapped his arms around me in an attempt to warm me leaning in close as he did. Tell me you don't want me, Isabella. Just say those words and I promise I will leave you alone. If not... He eyes flashed towards my lips and for a second all I wanted was for him to kiss me and I would forget about everything else. I felt my body involuntarily move towards him and he followed my movement suddenly our lips were so close. One more second and they would be touching. No. I don't want you. I whispered against his lips as I pulled my body away from his grip. He frowned at my sudden movement. Your body betrays your true feelings, Isabella. He said to me. But if those are your words, I will respect your wishes. Thank you. I'm so sorry if I was leading you on. It wasn't my intention. I guess I just got caught up in emotion after you saved my life today. I said to him trying to find some justification for everything that had happened today. Don't worry about it. I have enjoyed every single second I spent in your company, Isabella. He said to me with a smile. I gave him a, a half-hearted one in return. Thank you very much for the lovely meal, Drew. But I think it's best for both of us if we stay away from each other for the remainder of our time here. He looked devastated at my words and I felt awful. I should have never agreed to dinner with him I had just given him false hope that something might happen between us when it never could. I will agree to keep my distance from you on one condition, Isabella. I raised my eyebrows at him expecting him to say him to say he would like a kiss from me. I want you to take my number and promise me that if you ever need any help you will not hesitate to contact me. I cannot ask that of you. You have already saved my life once. You didn't ask me. Okay. I agreed realizing that he wasn't going to take no for an answer. He took my phone from my purse and quickly typed his number in. I left straight away after that not trusting myself in his presence. I had barely managed to pull away before we kissed. I opened the door to my room and Amelia turned to look in my direction. You're back earlier than I expected, she said to me in a surprised voice. I shrugged my shoulders at her trying to look as nonchalant as possible. We were literally just having some food and we have finished. Okay, I guess I'll be off then. Your boys haven't stirred so there's not much else to say. Thank you for watching them for me. Not a problem. She skipped towards the door in a cheery manner. Good night, Isabella. Good night, Amelia. Chapter 14 Alpha Drew POV Isabella had ran out of here like the place was on fire. Not that I blamed her. She must be so confused. The mate bond had definitely started to affect her and we were so close to kissing. I had stopped my lips just short of hers. I wanted nothing more than to crash my lips onto hers and taste her, but I didn't want her to feel as though I was taking advantage of her in her moment of weakness. If we had kissed it needed to be her decision. I knew that she wanted me as much as I wanted her, I could see the desire and need in her eyes, but yet again her loyalty to her damn husband had stopped her from giving into her desire. He had no idea how fucking lucky he was. Where the hell was he? I would never let anyone as precious as her out of my sight for even a second. I had agreed to keep my distance from her even though I knew it would be next to impossible, but I was going to respect her wishes. However that did not mean I wasn't going to still keep an eye on her from afar. I mean imagine if I hadn't followed her on the jet ski today? I shuddered at the thought. There was knock at my door and I went to open it knowing it would be Amelia. She had a very grim look on her face. I knew already this wasn't going to be good news. Amelia entered and took a seat on the sofa. It's worse than we expected, Drew. She started and I sighed deeply. So first of all, there is magic around her but very faint, so faint would suggest that it's an old spell cast perhaps a decade or possibly even two decades ago. I nodded along with her in understanding as she spoke so she knew I was following her. 
Secondly, I found her medication and although packaged in convincing tablet form, I can confirm it is indeed Wolf's Bane as you suspected. Why do I feel like there's more? I asked, not really wanting an answer but needing it anyway. Because there is. This is I would say the most worrying thing of all. There wasn't just medication in tablet form but also in a liquid form, which would suggest. She trailed off not wanting to say what we both thinking. That the young pups are being forced to have wolfsbane also. I gasped as I spoke. Who would be so evil? At that age it could do irreversible damage. From our conversations there is no way Isabella has any idea of what happening or that the medicine she gives to her darling children could potentially kill them if she were to accidentally give them the wrong dose. I call Cal to my room. We need to discuss a plan of action. I cannot simply walk up to her and tell her the truth. She would believe that I am the crazy one. I have also given her my word that I will stay away from her and I need her to know she can trust me. I need you to get Owen to find out everything you can about Isabella. I tell Cal. I mean everything, where she's from, who her husband is, who her parents are everything. No worries, Drew. I will call him right away. There's one more thing. I continue. For the rest of our trip you need to follow her and keep an eye on her from a distance. She can't know you are watching her, I have promised to leave her alone, but I need to know she is safe. Not a problem, Alpha. I wouldn't want anything to happen to our Luna. I turned and walked out to the balcony. I needed some fresh air after my conversation with Amelia. To be honest Casper was clawing at my mind asking to be let out for a run, he was just as agitated with the revelations about our mate as I was but I just couldn't risk it here. I wasn't familiar with the area. I managed to calm him down when I promised him I would have a long walk in the morning and survey the area to see if I could find somewhere suitable for me to shift and let him have a run and stretch his legs. As I stood on the balcony breathing in the crisp night air, her scent hit me, she was out on her balcony too. I quietly closed the sliding door to my balcony so she wouldn't hear the continuing conversation between Cal and Amelia. I stood silently inhaling her scent letting it wash over me in waves when my eyes shot open wide. I could smell her arousal. How I hoped she was thinking about me. Oh please be thinking about me. Then I heard her moan. I heard her moan my name. My dick was hard in an instant. I hurriedly mind-linked Cal, telling him to leave with Amelia. I didn't want either of them to hear this, this was a private moment just between us. Even though she didn't know I was here listening. I reached down and started to rub myself, whilst fantasizing about what Isabella was doing to herself. Casper was prancing around in my head. We were both ecstatic that she clearly wanted us. Isabella POV After Amelia had left and I checked on the boys, who were both still lying in the exact position they were when I'd last checked on them before I left with Drew for dinner, I stepped out onto the balcony. I knew that the night air had become cool but to be honest I felt like I needed to cool down. This evening's events kept coming back to me. Drew wrapping his arms around me causing little sparks of electricity to shoot across my skin, what was that? Did Drew feel it too? It felt amazing to be in his arms. I felt safe and protected. It felt like that was exactly where I was supposed to be. Then our lips moving tantalizingly close. I closed my eyes and allowed myself to imagine what his lips would have felt like on mine. How soft they would be. How delicious he would have tasted. I just knew he would have been so gentle in that kiss, even though everything in his eyes told me he wanted to devour me hungrily like I was his last meal. I felt myself dampen between my thighs. What was it about this man? Twice today just thinking about him made me feel wet and so turned on. For a second I wished I had met him before I met Marcus. I thought I loved him. I thought he loved me. But even when I had given myself to him fully he had never awoken feelings like this deep within me. As much as I had wanted him to touch me intimately again over the years, I would never wanted him as much as I wanted Drew right now. I reached down and slid my hands into my dress and started to gently caress my nipples, they were already so hard. 
I soft moan escaped my lips as I called out his name. In the seven years since Marcus had taken me and put the boys in my belly, I had never touched myself. But right now in this moment I didn't care. I needed a release. I needed to imagine that I'd given in and allowed Drew to touch me and ignite a fire in me that I'd long thought was extinguished. I rubbed my nipples harder. It wasn't enough. I reached down between my legs and quickly brushed my panties to the side. Thank God no one could see onto my balcony. I was so wet. I moved my fingers around not really sure where I needed to touch. Marcus hadn't really shown me any pleasure that one time. He just wanted to reach his own climax. I could see that now. My moans got slightly louder as I searched in my opening, not really sure what I needed. Mommy, I'm thirsty. I heard Jacob call from his room and I was snapped out of my fantasy and straight back to reality. Be there in a second, sweetie. I stood on shaky legs and started to walk back inside. Just as I was sliding the door closed, I could have sworn I heard a deep moan. It must have been a gust of wind I told myself. I washed my hands and splashed some cold water on my face then filled a glass with some juice and took it through to Jacob. He gulped it all down and then turned over and went back to sleep. I stood for a few minutes and watched them both sleeping. This is your life I told myself. These two darling angels. I got changed and crawled into bed and dreamt of nothing but Drew. Chapter 15 Isabella POV The next ten days were pretty uneventful. Marcus had finally called on day nine and had a quick chat to the boys asking them what they had been up to. They were very excited to speak to him and tell him all about their adventures so far, but Marcus couldn't have seemed less interested, if he tried. Thankfully the twins didn't pick up on this and were happy to talk to their daddy. He only spoke to me briefly to ask what I had been up to and check I had been on my best behavior, in those exact words, like I was some sort of child. I never once mentioned Drew and the boys had no clue about him which was good as they surely would have said something. I also left out the part about nearly drowning as this would have just angered him at my stupidity. Before he ended the call he checked that we were still taking our meds and asked what time we would be home so he could arrange for a car to collect us at the airport. This struck me as a bit unusual as he was never normally so considerate, but I thought that maybe he had genuinely missed us while we were away and had realized how much he did in fact love us all. I assured him we were up to date on our meds. There was no way I wanted to hear that crazy voice again and I had no desire for the boys to ever experience it. It was terrifying and I was not going to put them through that if I could help it. Drew had kept to his word and stayed away from me although I did feel I was being watched quite often when I was out of the room, but I could never see anyone looking like they were following me so I put it down to my imagination. Although I was happy Drew wasn't bothering me at the same time I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed not to see him. It was for the best though as I genuinely didn't think I would be able to control myself around him if he did come near. The past week has been pretty much the same every day. We have gotten up early, had our meds, Gone down for breakfast and then Jessica has collected the boys and taken them for most of the day, making sure they are back by 4.30 for their medication. After my near-death experience on the jet ski, I haven't really ventured from the poolside much. I still can't believe I was so reckless. However today I have booked myself on a guided bus tour of the island. Jack and Jacob have just spotted two of their new friends and hurriedly finished the last couple of mouthfuls of their breakfast. Before shouting a Bye mommy over their shoulders and running to meet them. I smile as I watch them run away. I'm so happy they are having such a good time. We have only got a few days left and I have already packed most of our things. Our flight is an early morning one and I don't want to be rushing around last minute and forgetting anything. I wander round to the front of the hotel and see the bus is already waiting. I open my backpack and have a quick check through. I have packed a couple of bottles of water, a spare bikini and shorts, my mobile, a towel and few snacks. I don't really know where we are headed and I don't want to get thirsty if there's nowhere to get a drink. I know that the bus will be making a few scheduled stops at beauty spots giving us all the opportunity to get off and have a look around. 
Jack and Jacob went on a similar trip a few days prior with the kids club and told me they stopped at a lovely little lake high in the mountains. That's why I've packed spare clothes and a towel so if we stop there and I decide to dip my feet in and get wet I'm not going to be sitting on the bus in wet clothes afterwards. I zip my backpack closed and climb onto the bus. I find an empty seat near the back. There's probably around 45 seats on here and nearly all of them are occupied. Nice and hot today. I hear a voice behind me and turn my head in that direction. I see a tall man with dark hazel eyes and a huge grin. He's shirtless and covered in what look like tribal tattoos. One in particular catches my eye. It looks like a wolf howling. See something you like. He grins even wider at me and I blush when I realize I must have looked like I was checking him out. I was just admiring your tattoos. I said in a slightly embarrassed voice. I turn back to face the front and then it occurs to me that he looked oddly familiar but I couldn't place my finger on why. As the bus set off I decided not to dwell on it and enjoy the ride. The first stop was at a beach slightly further down the coast. The waves here were huge and there were a lot of people out on surfboards. Rather them than me I thought to myself as I sat watching them and eating the vanilla ice cream I'd purchased at a little kiosk on the waterfront. It was probably the hottest day we had had here so far and I was glad of the opportunity to cool down slightly. After around an hour of sitting watching the surfers trying to catch the waves we were called back to the bus by the driver. He seemed a little bored but I guess he must drive this route so often that it's become dull to him now. The bus set off again and we headed away from the coast into the mountains. The views were amazing and I was happy to just stare out of the window taking it all in. As we climbed higher I became a little nervous as the sheer drop on one side of the road became higher and higher until we were at least 500 feet up. We pulled over into a little parking area, if you could even call it that, it was more of a clearing with gravel laid out on the floor. We disembarked and the driver informed us to meet back at the bus in an hour. I looked around and saw the lake the boys had spoken of. What they hadn't mentioned was the trees that were set off to the side giving the whole thing a magical look. I decided to venture in the direction of the trees as everyone else set off straight for the lake. I wanted a bit of peace and quiet and to stretch my legs after being sat on the bus for over an hour. I checked my watch and saw it was 11 a.m. As I entered trees I was thankful of the shade they provided. They were quite tightly packed and not much sunlight was able to find its way through. I kept walking. It was so tranquil in here. I came across a little stream and figured that it was either an offshoot of the lake or was feeding it. I decided to follow it not really sure where it would lead. After about 10 minutes I came across a clearing in the trees in which sat a tiny lake. This was not the same one that I'd seen when I got off the bus. Just to the right was a beautiful waterfall cascading down into the lake. The sunlight shone through it created dazzling rainbow colors. I glanced at my watch it was only 11.15. I had time for a quick dip before I had to head back to the coach. I looked around and saw I was completely alone. I would have to be extra careful not to go too deep as there was no one here to rescue me. I slipped my shoes and shorts off so I was just in my bright yellow bikini and tentatively stepped to the water's edge. As my feet touched the stones just in the water I could tell they had been smoothed out by the constant flow of water running over them. I took another step and now my ankles were submerged just a few more steps and my knees are now under. I'm only going to go up to my waist and then I will sit down on the rocks. As I'm taking one final step and about to sit down I hear the sound of a twig snapping behind me. I spin around at the sudden sound and I see a pair of glowing yellow eyes watching me. A scream escapes my mouth as I take quick step backwards. My foot slips on the stone and I'm falling back into the water. I go under completely and feel a sharp blow to the back of my head as it impacts a rock just below the surface. The last thing I remember before darkness consumed me was a pair of arms wrapping around me and a familiar feeling of warmth and sparks. Chapter 16 Alpha Drew POV over the last 10 days Isabella has barely left the poolside and I have spent most of my time on my balcony just admiring her beauty from afar.
Cal has enjoyed his mission to keep an eye on her as he has been able to spend nearly all his time at the pool bar, flirting with anyone who catches his eye. I have paid the cheery receptionist with a few hundred dollars to inform me of any excursions she might take so we can be prepared and Cal can book in on them too. After I had promised Casper I would find somewhere for him to run I had hired a car and drove up into the mountains. I'd found an area with a large lake that seemed to be a popular tourist destination, but just off to the side was a wooded area that no one seemed to venture into. So I'd stripped off and let Casper take control. He gladly ran about the woods playfully chasing any wildlife he saw. I hadn't seen him this relaxed for a while so I just sat back and let him have some fun. We had been up here a few times in the last week and he particularly enjoyed having a swim to cool down in the little lake he had found in a clearing. A few days before we were due to leave the receptionist had called to tell us that Isabella was booked on a coach trip that was heading to that exact spot. I'd immediately booked Cal onto the trip as well. I'd driven up ahead of them and parked the car. I'd entered the woods and stripped myself of my clothes and given Casper full control. He knew our mate was on her way and he wanted to see her through his own eyes for the first time so he had sat patiently hidden at the edge of the woods waiting for the bus to arrive. When she got off the bus we expected her to stay with the group but she headed straight in our direction. We watched as Cal started to follow her at a safe distance but we mink linked him that we were here and we would watch her till she was back on the bus. Casper had stalked her quietly through the trees and watched as she removed her shoes and shorts and stepped into the lake. There was a big bush blocking our line of sight so he'd taken a few steps to move around it. A twig snapped under our feet. Crap! She spun around and looked straight into Casper's eyes. A look of pure terror on her face she stepped back and slipped. It all seemed to happen in slow motion. Casper bounded forward and leapt through the air as she slipped under the water. I shifted Madeira and Dove under grasping her body as her head impacted a rock and she went limp in my arms. Shit shit shit. She was knocked out. I carried her bridal style to the water's edge and rolled up her shorts placing them under the back of her head. She was breathing thank goodness. What do I do? My clothes are nowhere near and I'm sat here next to her as naked as the day I was born. If she wakes up now she's going to be terrified. This was all my fault. If I had kept my distance like I promised she wouldn't be unconscious right now. She had only slipped when she saw Casper's eyes and was startled. I mind linked Cal, telling him where I left my clothes and to bring them right away. She moans and starts to move. I spot her towel and quickly wrap it around waist. It was better than nothing. Her eyes slowly flicker open and she tries to sit up. It's okay, Isabella. I'm here. Just try and lie still for a few minutes. You took a bit of a knock to the head. She turns her eyes to look at me and whispers. Drew? In a confused voice. Yes, princess, it's me. What? What are you doing here? What's going on? I was in the water and then I saw. She sits up quickly in a panic searching around her. SHHHH, sit still, try not to move. You might have a concussion. You took quite a blow to the head. It's a good job I happen to be passing by. I said feeling guilty as I said so knowing full well it was my fault. She narrowed her eyes at me and stared at me with a penetrative gaze. You were just passing by? In these same woods, on the same mountain in the middle of nowhere? She folded her arms across her chest in slight anger causing her breasts to press together and making them look bigger and more tasty than ever. Yes I've got a higher car and I have driven up here a few times. I found this little lake a few days ago. I like it as it's quiet and nobody else seems to come here. She watches me closely examining my voice for any hint of a lie. It's a good job what I'm saying is mostly true because I think she would see right through me if I was lying. The only part one left out was that it was Casper that liked it here. Her eyes widened when she took in my body clearly noticing that I only had her towel around me. Drew where are your clothes? Cal appeared at that exact moment carrying my shorts and shirt. Sorry, Drew, he said in a fake apologetic voice. 
I knew he was coming here for a little dip, and thought it would be funny to steal his clothes so he would have to walk back to the car butt naked, he said to Isabella. You! You were on my bus! Guilty. I knew Drew had been coming up here for a cheeky little skinny dip, and when I found out the bus was coming here too I saw an opportunity to prank him. Cal shrugged as if this was a totally normal thing to do. Then I heard a scream and realized he wasn't alone, and some poor woman had probably got the fright of her life seeing his naked ass, so I came back as quick as I could with his clothes. Isabella stared at Cal for a minute before she turned to me and laughed. He got you good, Drew. I shot Cal a mind link thanking him for his quick thinking. But what about the eyes I saw? Her whole body tensed up again and I realized she was shaking. I sat down next to her and pulled her onto my lap and she melted into my arms with her head on my shoulder. I didn't see anything, Isabella. I think you may have a concussion after all. You did hit your head pretty hard. It must be making you imagine something that wasn't there. She just sat silently in my lap for a few moments before she sighed and said, Maybe you're right. Cal crept away leaving us to have a private moment. I gently caressed Isabella's arms with the tips of my fingers and she shuddered from the sensation. Having her pressed so tightly against me when we were both barely clothed was making me hard. I started to worry that she would feel my hardness pressing against her and panic. She squirmed slightly in my grasp and rubbed herself on my dick, I don't know whether she intended it or not but man it felt good. Her arousal filled my nostrils and I knew then she could feel me and liked it. That was enough for me to loose my last bit of self-control as I grasped her cheek and turned her face to mine. Our eyes connected and I leant slowly down moving my lips towards hers. This time time she didn't resist me as she moved to meet me. Our lips touched and it was like a thousand volts of electricity shot straight through me. My grip on her waist tightened as I kissed her softly. I wanted to take her right now. I needed to take her. I wouldn't push her though. I let her take control. This would only go as far as she wanted. I would never make her do anything she didn't want to even if it tore me up inside. If she never wanted anything else but this kiss then I was going to save her every moment. I gently squeezed her ass cheek and she gasped through our kiss opening her mouth and giving me full access. I gladly took it moving my tongue inside and explored every inch. What started as a sensual kiss rapidly became hungry and full of passion. She tasted like strawberries and cream and I was addicted. I knew this was it. I was never going to be able to get this taste out of my mind. I was going to need to kiss her every day for the rest of my life. We pulled apart gasping for air and she stared at me, panting, her sexy breasts heaving up and down. I'm so sorry, Drew. She gasped breathlessly at me. I shouldn't have done that. You have saved my life twice now and while feeling you against me. She trailed off whilst looking away not wanting to finish her sentence. She didn't want to admit that her entire body was craving mine just as mine was hers. She didn't know I could smell how much she wanted me. Isabella. Look at me. She shook her head and started to sob. Isabella. I whispered her name. Do you believe in soulmates? She turned her gaze to me. Once upon a time maybe, but not anymore. Not for me anyway. My life is far from a fairy tale. The only joy I have is Jack and Jacob. She sniffed as her sobs ceased as she thought of her boys. I could see just how much they meant to her. Well, I do, Isabella, and I believe you are mine. I think we're destined to be together, and that's why we can't help but want each other. So you have no reason to feel guilty for kissing me. You cannot fight fate no matter how hard you try. She smiled weakly at me. Fate or not. I have children with my husband. So I must remain with him for their sake. I understand. She pried herself from arms and stood walking away. No matter how miserable I am with Marcus. She muttered under her breath not knowing I could hear every word. Chapter 17
Isabella POV. I instantly missed the warmth as I tore myself from Drew's arms and walked away from him. How could I kiss him? I had lost control and I was just glad that I'd returned to my senses before things had gone further. I don't know what it is about him, but every time he's near me the rest of the world just seems to melt away until it's just the two of us. When he had pulled me onto his lap and embraced me my whole body had just melted like butter that had been left out all day. I could feel his hardness pressing into my buttocks through my towel that he had wrapped around him. I was thankful that my entire body was still wet from being submerged in the lake otherwise he would definitely have felt the dampness that spread between my legs. I couldn't resist rubbing myself on him and feeling him getting even harder and when he leaned in for a kiss, this time I was powerless to resist. Marcus had never kissed me like this, even when he had seemed so loving at the beginning. There was so much tenderness and love there that I almost spread my legs for him there and then. It had to be the bang to my head. It had knocked me senseless. I threw my shorts back on and heaved my backpack over my shoulder and began to walk in the direction I'd come from. I could hear Drew getting dressed behind me but I dare not look back. I had barely managed to prize myself away from him after that amazing kiss. I was so scared of what I might do if I turned back around. I stumbled slightly as I made my way through the trees. After 15 minutes I still hadn't reached the tree lean and I began to panic. Was I lost? I should have never walked off on my own in such a state. Glancing at my watch I saw that it was past the time I should have been back to the bus. Surely they would wait. There were a lot of people there and the driver hadn't seemed to bothered about checking we were all there after our last stop. I tried to calm myself so I could find my way out of here. Another half an hour and I was completely lost. Drew! I called out his name in desperation, hoping he would still be nearby. He's not going to have hung around after you just walked away from him like that I thought. Isabella? I was overjoyed to hear his voice and began to run in the direction it came from. I dodged round a big bush and I was back in the clearing. I have been walking in circles. Must be the concussion. Drew's eyes light up when he sees me. I thought you would have been on the bus by now. I got a bit lost. Come on I'll drive you back. You should probably get checked out by a doctor anyway. He offers me his arm and after a bit of hesitation I take hold of it. I have been walking for a while and I'm feeling a little dizzy. We set off and I let him lead me since he seems to know where he's going. Just as we reach the edge of the trees, I spot the man from the bus, the one who had stolen Drew's clothes as a joke. He is leaning up against a car with an amused look on his face. As I go to step over a fallen branch I'm hit with an almighty wave of dizzy and my head begins to spin. I tighten my grip on Drew's arm and he stops looking worried. Are you alright? I just feel very dizzy all of a sudden. Without saying another word he bends down and scoops me up into his arms like I weigh nothing at all and proceeds to carry me the rest of the way to the car. I tell him I'm fine and I can walk but he's not having any of it. I wriggle in his arms to try and get free but he just tightens his grip on me and I realize that my efforts are futile. I guess you want to ride back too then Cal. Drew asks the man as we approached the car. I was waiting for this lovely lady to come back for the bus and when she didn't show I figured I'd better wait and make sure she was okay. After all it's my fault she got scared straight out there. He winks at me and I can't help but giggle. He seems like such a big kid. So mischievous. Fine. Get in. Drew says rolling his eyes at Cal. He reaches over and opens the door then gently sets me inside before leaning over me to fasten my seatbelt. He gives me a big smile and then closes the door. Cal jumps in the back while Drew walks round to the driver's side and climbs in. By the way Cal. If you ever pull a stunt like that again you will be walking back. Drew glances at him in the rear view mirror. I giggled again as Cal saluted back saying. I sir. Once we arrived back at the hotel Drew had carried me back to my room even though I insisted I was fine and I could walk now. We got a few stares from other guests but mainly from the hotel employees. 
I buried my face in the crook of Drew's neck to hid my embarrassment. Cal had followed behind us carrying my backpack and as soon as we were inside my room Drew had sent him to fetch a doctor. He had sat next to me on my bed and wouldn't let me move until the doctor had been to check me over. I was given the all clear but told it was probably best for me to rest for a few days just in case before my flight home. I had tried multiple times to get up but each time Drew had demanded I lay back down and he would fetch whatever it was I wanted. In fact the only time he let me move off the bed was when I needed the bathroom and even then he carried me to the toilet, placed me on it and waited outside for the door for me to finish before he carried me back. When it was time for me to collect Jack and Jacob he had sent Amelia in my place. Just before they returned he had carried me through to the living room and given me a peck on my forehead. I think he knew that it would be best if he wasn't here when they came back to avoid any awkward questions about who he was and why he was in our room. Call me when your sons are asleep and I'll come and keep you company. I shook my head at him. That won't be necessary. He looked at me like he was about to argue then he must have decided not to push the matter further. In that case please just call me if you need anything. I will. Jack and Jacob came bouncing into the room immediately asking why I hadn't been there to collect them. Mammy bumped her head today and wasn't feeling well so I asked my friend to get you instead. I told them and they just looked at me with wide eyes. Are you okay Mammy? Jack had asked me. I'm fine. I assured him. We spent the rest of the evening all cuddled together watching Disney films and eating room service. Then they had took themselves off to bed. I laid on the sofa flicking through the channels until I fell asleep. I dreamt about the voice again only this time was different to the others. This time she was singing happily about finding her mate. Chapter 18 Isabella POV I awoke on the sofa where I'd fallen asleep last night feeling a bit stiff. Today is our last day I thought to myself sadly. Back to reality tomorrow. Back to my miserable life. Thank God for the boys, they were my rainbow of joy on a rainy day. Speaking of rainy days, looking towards the window, I noticed the sky looked dark and the bright warm sunshine I'd become, accustomed to whilst here was noticeably absent. As I sat there cursing our luck that our last day was going to be a washout, the room phone rang. I went quickly over to answer it and was greeted by the friendly receptionist I'd spoken to a few times, when I was booking various activities. Good morning, Mrs. Orlain. I'm sorry to call so early. I have been asked by your flight company to notify you that due to a particularly bad storm that is heading our way, that they have moved your flight up from tomorrow morning to this lunchtime. Okay, thank you very much. I sighed as I replaced the receiver glad that I'd already packed most of our things. I shouted the boys and told them the news which they were not happy with in the least. After a lot of grumbling and moaning we were ready and on our way back to the airport in the car. As we approached the airport I felt so sad that this was it, I was never going to see Drew again. I knew nothing could ever happen between us but just the idea of never even seeing him again made me feel so emotional. I pulled the car in and got out signaling the boys to follow. They were both in a foul mood and I was dreading the next five and a half hours on the plane. I lifted the bags out of the car and started to struggle across the pavement to the airport car rental desk to return the keys. Here Mississippi. Let me help you with those. I froze for a second and turned round to be greeted with Drew's ocean blue eyes. I looked at him puzzled as to why he was acting like he didn't know me, and then I realized he was putting up an act in front of the boys. Thank you. Drew took all my bags and carried them over to a luggage trolley while I handed the keys in at the desk. I came back outside where Jack and Jacob were shouting at each arguing about who was sitting where on the plane. Drew returned with all the bags on the trolley. Stealing a quick look at the boys to check they weren't paying any attention I whispered to Drew. What are you doing here? Same as you, bad storm coming in so we were advised to fly a day earlier. He whispered back. He leant down and glancing in the direction of the twins seeing that they still had their backs to us arguing, he kissed my cheek and moaned into my ear. Until we meet again my princess. Remember do not hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything.
With that he turned and walked away from not once looking back as I stood there watching him walking away from my life forever. The entire plan ride back had been torture. The boys had thankfully fallen asleep not long after takeoff. They were tired from the very early hour I'd woken them this morning. I had been left alone with nothing but my thoughts for company. At this point I would have preferred to have to be breaking up Jack and Jacob's arguments. All I could think about was Drew. How it felt to be in his arms, the taste of his lips, the fireworks that erupted on my skin every time he touched me. I kept absent-mindedly touching my hand to my cheek where Drew had kissed me before he walked away. The plane skidding along the runway roused the twins and jerked me back to reality. This is the life you choose Isabella. Deal with it. I called a taxi as we exited the airport. I know Marcus had said he would send a car to collect us, but that wasn't until tomorrow, and I thought it would be nice for us to surprise him. The boys were very excited to see him and tell him all about their holiday. The taxi journey was about another hour due to traffic and some road work so the boys were starving when we finally arrived home. Can we have some cereal? Jacob had asked as I was dragging our cases up the long driveway to our house. We weren't millionaires or anything like that, but we were pretty well off so our house was a lovely little townhouse, with its own decent-sized back garden and private driveway that was lined with huge oak trees on either side. Hmm. I replied to him slightly distracted when I spotted Cindy's car parked in our garage. The garage door was open so I could see clearly it was hers. I wonder why she's here. I dragged our bags the rest of the way up the drive and slipped the keys in the lock. I left our bags outside I figured I could get Marcus to bring them in for me. The boys bounded through the door and straight towards the kitchen to get some cereal. I popped my head in the living room and then walked to the dining room. I was getting more confused by the second. Why was Cindy's car in the garage if she wasn't here? She couldn't be in the kitchen, I would have heard her greet the boys, and where was Marcus? Maybe she's had to go up to the bathroom? I started to climb the stairs and heard a moan. I stopped dead. That was a moan of pleasure and it was coming from my bedroom. Shaking and terrified of what I was about to see, I tiptoed up the rest of the stairs. I glanced behind me to check the boys were still occupied in the kitchen and hadn't followed me. The moans got louder as I approached my door. Both male and female moans. With a hand shaking like a leaf I reached for the door handle and turned it. I pushed the door open and stood rooted on the spot. This couldn't be real. There on my bed was my husband, completely naked, hands gripping my equally naked best friend's waist and guiding her as she rode him. They were so into what they were doing they didn't even notice me stood in the doorway. As horrifying as the sight in front of me was I couldn't look away. I don't think my brain could process what it was seeing. They both screamed each other names as they climaxed together and that seemed to snap me out of the trance I was in. What the fuck is going on? I screamed so loud it burned my throat. Both of their heads whipped round in my direction in pure shock. Cindy scrambled to climb off Marcus as he fumbled around on the floor looking for his clothes. Isabella. You aren't supposed to be home till tomorrow. Marcus said in a panicked voice while zipping up his jeans. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Please carry on don't mind me. I yelled at him as I turned on my heel and ran down the stairs tears streaming down my face. I ran into the kitchen and scooped up my bemused sons and ran for the door. I don't know where I was going. I don't know what I was doing. I just knew I had to get us as far away from those two as possible. My heart was shattered. I had been married to Marcus for all those years and he'd never even touched me since our first time together. Now I know why, he was getting what he wanted from my best friend. How could I be so stupid? I had brought her into our lives. I grabbed one of the bags on my way past knowing that each case had a mixture of all our clothes and it wouldn't matter which one I took. I looked over my shoulder as I ran down the drive and saw Cindy stood just in the doorway with a guilty expression on her face. She should feel guilty. 
I comforted her a complete stranger when her boyfriend had left her and this is how she repays me? By betting my husband and the father of my children. Marcus was sprinting after me but I got a good head start and there was no way I was going to let him catch us. I knew he would somehow try and talk his way out of it. I bolted onto the street and waved a taxi over. I threw the boys in and the bag I'd grabbed before I jumped in and slammed the door. Drive! I shouted at the shocked driver. He slammed his foot on the accelerator just as Marcus reached the door and banged on the window. I watched through the back window as he ran behind us roaring my name like a possessed angry beast, before we started to gain some distance on him and he slowed to a stop watching us drive away from him forever.